Hello everyone. My name is Melinda Hart. You are watching Stamping with Hart. I am an independent demonstrator with Stampin' Up! And today we are going to be making these cards focusing first on the basket technique, the basket weave um, technique. So this is a follow-up Here's just a quick look right here. Um, we have a few different sizes here to work with. I'll go through these in just a moment. Um, but this is a follow up on the last video that I did featuring how you could stamp and punch these strawberries in bulk with your sweet strawberry bundle. So if you haven't already seen that tip video, I will link it um, in the upper corner here and I'll put a picture up on the screen just so that you can see what I'm referring to. Um, so I won't be you know, teaching the same technique in this video with the strawberries. Today we're gonna focus on the basket weave and then I'll show you how I made these cards. Let's talk about the technique. So what I'm referring to specifically is this basket weave. If you are interested in making a bunch of basket cards or um, a scrapbook page or something like that, uh, that's what I'm gonna be focusing on today with the amount that I'm going to be cutting. So it really is to um, coordinate with this. You have a bunch of strawberries and now you're gonna make a bunch of cards. You know, what do you wanna do with it? So um, let me just give you a look at the cards real quick. Just super, super cute. Absolutely loving these sets. The sweet strawberry bundle and then the um, celebration set that coordinates with it. Um, but let's talk about this. So here we have, I'll just put the card over to the side. So we're going to be recreating this. I'm gonna be using slightly different wood grain um, papers because I ran out of these two in particular, but um, we'll do something similar. We'll do a similar pattern from the same set, which I'll get into in a minute. But this is the 12 by 12 version. This is what we're gonna be making today. And you can break that down into smaller groups. So either a three inch square or a six inch square, just depending on if you are a scrapbooker or a card maker, um, or maybe you're planning another project uh, that I'm not thinking of, or you do want the full background like this, just, just depending. For me, um, I really focus more on cards, like you see here, and I wanted to feature all of the different fruits that came um, with this stamp set. Uh, the one that has the coordinating punch for the bulk stamping and punching are the strawberries. Uh, with these, I did a combination of punches and fussy cutting. Okay, so just so that you're aware of that. But uh, let's go ahead and do the classic basket weave technique and then we'll make the cards. For the Wood Grain Designer Series paper, I am going to be using the In Good Taste Designer Series paper pack, which is this paper over here. Um, it's part of the In Good Taste suite if you already have that or if you just bought the papers. I'm gonna be pulling um, different types of wood grain uh, tones from this Designer Series paper. That's in the annual catalog, 2020, 2021 annual catalog from Stampin' Up. Okay, and here are some of the wood grain patterns. So like I said, um, with this basket weave that I did previously, I've done a couple of them now, I ended up running out of that really dark wood. So I'm gonna be using um, a lighter tone. So you'll get to see a little bit of variety with that. We're gonna be um, selecting two 12 by 12 sheets. I'm not doing um, a perfect match on purpose. So you can see it's kind of that same uh, wood pattern, just different tones. So I'm gonna do these two here. If you want it to be a closer match, you know, you could do that too. Again, this is very slightly different. Um, but within that, you know, within those tones. So if you wanna do a closer match, you could do that. Um, I'm gonna do something that's a little contrasty so that you can see clearly on the video how this is coming together if you've never done um, the classic paper weaving before. We're gonna take one 12 by 12 sheet and we are going to cut it into 12 one inch strips using our paper trimmer here, okay? and then I'll show you what we're gonna do with the next sheet.
here are our one inch strips. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 of them. All right, and we're gonna go with our next step now. We're just gonna set these aside. For the next part of this, we're gonna be doing something slightly different. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut to 11 inches and we're gonna leave an inch of space up at the top of the paper all the way across, okay? And that is so that we can get um, a good paper weave without them being fully apart. So this is gonna stay together, which will give us a little bit of a head start. Now you don't have to do a full inch if you don't want to, that's just what I've chosen because I think it's a simple way um, to demonstrate it. And it's also because that's you know the, um, the size that I've chosen to go with with the paper weave for this basket. If you wanna do thinner strips, you can. It's just gonna take a little bit longer. Um, so totally up to you. We're going to go with an inch here. So we're going to use our paper trimmer to do this. And how we're going to do this is you're just going to go to the one inch mark, cut up 11 inches. And the way that you know that you hit 11 is that this line here, so the ruler is an inch. You can see that that right here, that is an inch. So you're just going to follow these numbers and cut to 11, so you're gonna to cut to this black line here. And the way that we know we're gonna hit that line is we have this little side notch that we're gonna line up with this line every time we get to that 11 inch mark. We're gonna do that all the way across. If you're having a tough time, especially as we get further down the ruler, it gets a little bit hard to see, use one of your strips as your guide. So. Just tuck it, it's very easy to slide this under when you're cutting. Um, just don't slide it so far that it gets into the, um, you know, you don't want it to get in the way of the blade. But just to give yourself that guide so that your little notch can stop right here at this lower edge of your one inch strip. Okay, that's a really good easy way to keep your guide so that you can get all the way across and that you can get a nice even paper weave in the end and then we'll trim it down into the sizes that we need so i'm just going to do this all the way across the paper so let's see we're going to go to the one inch mark first make sure it's one inches on both ends you'll have um, rollers on either end and you have these lines which are always on the inch mark which is nice all the way down so that you have that guide for your paper definitely want to try to keep it as even as we can I'm just gonna get the scoring tool out of the way. We won't need that. And then I'm just gonna slide up and I'm gonna, as we get close to this line here, I'm just gonna take this notch and line it up with that line. And once I get to that line, I'm gonna stop. We're gonna go to two inches now. Line it up both ends. Just make sure you're holding your paper down in place so it doesn't slide when you lock in your blade. Same thing, gonna bring this up, match this notch, and now let me slide this in here just to double check. Don't wanna get it all the way over, but enough to the notch. Okay, and that matches. So we're gonna move on to the next one, and we're just gonna keep doing that all the way across. The other thing that you can do, just to make sure that you don't make a mistake when you're cutting, is don't ever bring the blade down from the top. Always go from the bottom and up so that you can stop. And then that way you won't you know, have an accident with accidentally cutting the paper in half. So when you're done, this is what it should look like. Okay, so we have our you know, solid across, one inch here, and then we have all of our grooves. And now we're gonna start weaving those individual pieces in. I'm going to be working with the, um, the side that's not cut 
on the right on this side and we're gonna start weaving in. So before I just start showing you this real quick, if you've never done this before, when they say your classic paper weave or your classic basket weave, just a traditional weave pattern, they do an under and an over. So the flap that's out on top is over and the one that's tucked and then um, the other flap is on top, that's under. So under, over, under, over, under, over, and then the same this way. So that's what we're gonna be doing here. So we're gonna take, I just wanna make sure that you can see what I'm doing here, hang on. I don't wanna lose my, my strips are getting pushed pretty far back on my table here. Okay, so I am going to lift up the first strip. So this would be under, over, under. So we're gonna start with under. And what we're gonna do is every time we lift a strip up, we're gonna hold the next strip down so that we can glide it easily. And we're just gonna continue that right on down the line and we'll do opposite next. So for this one, it's under over all the way across. Lift up, hold the other one down. Lift up, hold the other one down. This one up, other one down. So when you get to the end, what you wanna do is tuck this into place and make sure that the ends match perfectly. We know we're working with 12 by 12, so they should meet perfectly. Okay. The way that you'll know if it's not properly lined is you'll have a little tail out. Okay, so we're gonna get that as close as we can because the tighter the weave, the better. You won't have any, you know, it'll stay nice and even. It won't be crooked. You won't see any gaps. And you can make adjustments as you go. Um, doesn't have to be perfect, but definitely you want that more of a tight lock. Over. We're going to lift the second. And then just continue. every other strip. We're just gonna tuck this in. Okay, I see a little bit of a tail here. So I'm gonna just tug on the other end, get that back in place. Okay, that looks pretty close. And we're just now starting to see that sort of checker pattern. Under, lift first strip. So uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna break this down into smaller squares for cards. We're looking for the three inch mark here. Just 
just gonna lock that in. Okay, so one thing that I wanna say is from here, depending on the size of the card that you choose, that's gonna determine the size of your basket. This card is four and a half by four and a half inches um, on the uh, Pacific Point cardstock. Okay, so four and a half by four and a half, and then we have our layers and everything. My final measurement on this basket to get the sizing to the place where I wanted it for this card size was two and a half inches. Okay, so just a little trim off of the top of the basket so that I could show off more of the berries and the leaves and all of that lovely stuff. So I trimmed it to two and a half, three inch or six inch. So when I cut my first 12 by 12 sheet, I did three, six, three. Okay, just remember that these are not glued, they're just locked together. So as you trim these down, if you feel like they're coming a little bit loose, just tuck them back in. If you wanna put a little glue on them, um, just to keep them in place, if that would make you feel better, you could do that. When you go to put these on the card, you will be putting glue or um, dimensionals on the back. So just keep that in mind, that that will be holding it in place when you get to that step on the card, if that's what you're making these for. So you have two scrapbook pages potentially, or you could cut these down to more baskets for card fronts. You could potentially, if you're doing this all for the same size, all for the same card, you will have one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 baskets for your card fronts. So you can use them um, like I'm using them here for the fruit. You can use this particular pattern for Easter um, that's gonna be coming up soon. There are just so many different ways that you could incorporate this into your cards. Um, so what we're gonna do now is anybody who wants to stay for the card tutorial, I'm gonna make that next. Four and a half, four and a half by nine, and then scored at four and a half. Okay, so here is the sweet strawberry bundle. Here is the Berry Blessings stamp set. So this is a celebration stamp set. Okay, it has the same fonts, the same exact art. It's designed to coordinate together. So if you were to purchase the sweet strawberry bundle and whatever other products that you had planned to buy and you get to $100, you could actually choose the Berry Blessing stamp set and it also comes with designer series paper that looks just like this, okay? Uh, and that is the paper that we used on these cards. So I'm also gonna point out that the color combos that they used on their designer series paper are right here. And I'm using those same color combinations for the berries. Okay, so you can use whichever designer series pattern paper that you want. I decided to use the fruit side on the front of each of these cards. So the blueberry, this is a combination of the raspberry, the blueberries, and the strawberries. And then this one is the raspberries. Every side has a fruit side and a pattern side. Okay, just to give you a look at these. Absolutely beautiful papers.
and the vellum is going to be cut to three and three quarters by three and three quarters. So just depending on the sentiment that you're using, we're gonna be using the Banners Pick-A-Punch. I'll show that to you in just a moment. Um, but you might wanna cut your, your um, white cardstock piece for your sentiment for the outside of the card as well. This is a one inch strip. And of course you can see it's hitting on the three inch mark here. So our basket is three inches. So this is about three inches. So it was probably about three and a half before I punched the banners off. Um, and then here we have the half inch size. So here is our banners pick a punch and here's our half inch, our three quarter inch and our one inch grooves. So just something to keep in mind. I'm gonna go ahead and cut my pieces for this now. Okay, so for our basket handle, this piece right here, we're going to be using something called the faux suede trim. Okay, and let me see if I can turn up the light on this for just a second. It really does look like faux suede. It's so cool. Okay, so this is a wonderful um, trim to have if this is something that you like, uh, like a color or a texture. This is such a great way to add textures and just a little, um, you know, it feels like a professional detail element that you're putting onto your cards, even if it's just a small snippet like we're going to be using for um, our basket handle. Okay, so we're going to cut probably about six inches and that's just to give yourself some extra if you really want to take it down to like the necessary you could probably do five just so long as you have enough for a basket when we start laying this down to see what this is going to look like you can see it's a little too tall for the card, right? I mean, if you were centering it in the center and it was gonna be a layer, it looks perfect. But since we're gonna be putting some fruit in it, we're gonna have a handle on it, I wanna trim that down a little. So I'm gonna take this down to two and a half inches. Not on both sides, just on one side. So that two and a half inch mark there. So that when we go back to our card, I'm going to offset it. So I'm going to pull it down to the strawberry layer. And we have a nice area that we could do some um, strawberries. And then another detail element is lining our basket. So this is another half inch strip. And I'm just going to use the coordinating paper. Okay, so if you want to glue down some of your um, strips, you can take your, you know, your um, multi-purpose glue, your Tombow. This is what I get for not putting something down. And you could just set it down like that. All right. So you could just literally lift up the pieces and put your glue underneath. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that we are gonna be putting glue on the back. And we're gonna be doing that in a couple of different ways. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the tear and tape. Um, this is a stronger adhesive, which will hold ribbon. So I'm gonna put a little bit of the tear and tape adhesive on either side. You could still do glue um, or you could put it on dimensionals, you know, whatever your preference is. Okay, 
So that is going to be for the handles. The other thing I'm going to start putting down are my dimensionals. And what I like to do is put the dimensionals right over the creases where we know our paper is interwoven. And that just gives it a little extra lock so that we know it's going to stay in place. I'm going to do two layers of these, so about six dimensionals. And the reason for that is I'm going to leave some space if I want to tuck in my strawberries. Okay. Now let me get my handle. I'm just going to eyeball this. And then I'm just going to add some of the um, multi-purpose glue for this. Okay, and now I know I'm getting crazy with the punches, so this is completely and totally optional. You would do this before you put your basket down, but on this set of cards, I actually rounded off the edge. So the way that you would do that, you would take your trio punch, particularly this rounded corner edge. We would feed in one of our layers, and you would want to be careful with your strips to kind of hold them in place and then just punch. Okay. So it totally depends on the look that you would want. And of course you would trim that top part down um, just by half an inch there. Okay, so this is what it looks like as this, the square basket. Here's that rounded edge basket. Okay, so here um, are the strips that I was using in the tip video. Here's what we have left. I'm just gonna punch these out. So I still have my stamp and spot, my poppy parade stamp and spot hanging around from my tip video. So we're just going to continue on with this one. We're going to use our half inch strip for thank you. We want to leave tails on both ends for that punch. Here are our finished cards 
and you can do up to 16 of these. All right, thank you so much and stay tuned for the next video.